Tuesday evening, everyone. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. We're hitting the nine o'clock hour here on uh, December 12th. But let's see what's playing in the Dave Ramsey world of finance. Okay. This ran seven hours ago. I overdraw my bank account every month. I would like to sincerely thank you for joining me this evening. I hope you're having a good Tuesday. All right, folks, let's do it. This is about seven minutes, eight minutes. We'll see if I can keep it to like 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, here we go. Brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. Travis starts us off this hour in Toledo. Hi, Travis. Welcome to the Ramsey. Hi, Show. Travis. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Uh, I have a negative balance every month, and I'm kind of trying to figure out how to how to get positive again. Um, starting off kind of a little rough every single month after bills and everything. So your your bank account is negative every month, like you're yeah, overdrawn. It's, it's, um, Yep, I'm uh, overdrawn. I actually almost on a weekly basis. Mm. Um, you know, I, it's funny that you talk about this. I literally just got off a webinar about this this very thing, and at the end of the day, it's probably boiling down to budgeting issues. Do you have a budget? Um, I've been working on trying to do one. I recently got the Every Dollar app uh, mm -hmm. premium uh, because it was able to track my stuff better, but yeah. I'm, I'm struggling like weekly with groceries. It's, it's just with yeah. a family of five. Uh, whoa, whoa. It's hard to keep it under a certain amount. Okay. 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 So he has a family of five. He's drawn, he's overdrawn regularly in his checking account. All right. So many directions I could go with this. I know, even though I'm a family of one, just me, myself, and I, um, it really doesn't matter what size family you have when you're overdrawn, you're overdrawn. Something that money has taught me having been in debt, crawling myself out of debt. Okay. Been married, divorced, dealt with debt there and all of that. It really doesn't matter to a certain extent, to a certain extent, um, just how big or small your household size is. It has everything to do with the incoming and outgoing budget period. Now, we may sit there and we may go, oh, well, that's obvious. But what's interesting is living alone, okay, you would be surprised at um, some of the not so polite comments I've gotten in the past by people either with kids or not, not, not a lot, but, but just a few, but those handful of comments are people who just kind of assume that everything must be very easy because you are a household of one and a household of just one person. You know, I have certain risks that a household with two people don't have to have. Whereas, uh, you know, cause there's poten potentially a second income earner, but a household of, you know, more than two also takes risks that I don't have to have. You know, you risk that the other person is a money spender, Okay, you risk that you don't see money the same way. So there are pluses and minuses. I used to overdraw my bank account all the time. Um, but I want to hear more about this guy before I try to um, give any more commentary on it. Okay, but as a household of one, I used to overdraw all the time. And my biggest thing wasn't even budgeting. Yes, to a point it was, but it was simply lack of dollars coming in. So it didn't matter how I tried to budget. I was short. Okay, so I want you to not try to do the budget. I want you to actually do it. I want you to go in there, put the numbers in there. That's step one. You if and you, your wife. Yeah. Have you start? Have you actually filled out a budget for the month? Uh, no. No, I have not. I haven't been able to figure it out. Yeah. Okay, so that's step one. Matter of fact. Um, and the fact that he's, I'm taking notes, you guys. You guys know I take notes. Um, the fact that he's uh, married, all right, he and his wife really, really should be on the budget together. You know, you hear about those. We've we've watched some of those Ramsey shows where one person says, "Oh, to the other person, you just go do the budget," and the other and and so all the responsibility of the budget is laid on the shoulders of one person, and and it, and it shouldn't be like that. One person should not have to shoulder all that responsibility. I want you to go to everydollar.com slash budgeting when this call is over. And I want you to sign up for the next webinar because if the issue is I've got it, is it, you know, is it, I'm not, I don't have time to do it or I'm not prioritizing the time to do it. I really want you to prioritize this the time, sit down what with your wife tonight, start looking at it. 
What's your take home pay? Uh, take home is about thirty six hundred a month. How much is your rent? Uh, the, the mortgage is five sixty a month. What's your car payment? The mortgage. That's it. Five sixty. You know what people would pay? Pe people would pay money to only have a five sixty mortgage. Okay, his income isn't. You know, for he's got a family of seven. No, no, he said he said a family of five triplets, and he and his wife. Okay, so he's got a family of five, thirty six hundred incoming, which doesn't sound like a lot because I'm thinking, you know, what what's your rent or mortgage? But mortgage, wow. Uh, car payment is a little high. It's four forty one a month. Mm -hmm. Okay, and five kids. Uh, three kids, wife that oh, is unable people. to work due to, yes, five people. Do, three due kids, to what? wife that is unable to work due to medical issues. What kind of medical issues? Uh, it's actually like a hereditary degenerative uh, disease mm -hmm. where it's actually just getting worse as time goes on, too. So, mm -hmm. Can, Does she have social security disability or something? I, I do not know much about, I, I don't know anything about that. But I'm wondering, does she have social security disability income? Because honestly, a household of five, I mean, I, okay, I'm a party of one. And um, uh, I take home almost that. And I'm a party of one. Yeah, one. If it, And with my little part-time job, I can take home about that. So I could imagine having four other people on my income. And I'm wondering, doesn't... Can she apply for Social Security? I mean, some sort of disability. Okay. How old are your kiddos? Uh, I got triplets, uh, four and a half years old. Okay. Wow. Okay. So consumer debt's kind of got me in a How much debt right do you have? Um, not including the car, it's about 26000 Okay. Here's the thing. We got to start at the other end. Groceries don't catch the slack. Groceries are the thing. So we're going to start with this: thirty-six hundred at the top of the page. You follow me? Yes. Minus the important things first. The most important thing in your entire budget is food. See, now I disagree. I've heard Ramsey say um, regularly that he thinks food is. I don't, and here's why: I think the roof over your head. The fact that he has a mortgage that is, I mean, that's less than $600. To, to put it in perspective, his mortgage, if you go 600 and average rent in Tampa, if I wanted to guarantee that I could rent an apartment in Tampa, I would need to plan about $1,800. Okay. You have to remember, at least here in Tampa, the prices that you see in the brochure, that is not your actual rent price. Because in that, in the brochures, if you're ever sleuthing for apartments in Tampa, they don't include the maintenance fee for renters. They don't include the uh, trash dump fee. They don't include the pest control fee. So in Tampa, okay, and I can only speak for the Tampa area because this is where I live, you, it'll say, a one bedroom apartment, $1,600. And you're thinking, okay, you go to sit and sign. They go, oh, and by the way, we have rent, we have trash, we have, I mean, we, we have, we have pest, we have uh, maintenance, we have trash. Your actual rent is seventeen seventeen fifty. That's something to keep in mind. So he always says food is first. I say no. Rent is first. And especially in this case with his mortgage. And here's why. He's got he, he has little kids, but the bottom line is there are food banks, there are churches. Um, if you have kids who are school age, there's free and reduced lunches. Okay, food can be solved, in my opinion, much easier than a roof over your head. And I would rather, if I w were in his position or in any position where I had to choose between the rent and the food bottom line is you can eat oatmeal 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 all right um but without but without the roof over your head you got three kids and a wife with a pretty serious medical condition sitting in a car but all well fed no that this is just 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 my opinion where we agree to respectfully disagree you have the money to buy food you yeah. may not have the money to do some other stuff, but you have the money to buy food, period. End of story. And it appears 
with a $560 mortgage, he, he's got an ace of a mortgage. I mean, the jackpot ace. He will never get that rate, rate of mortgage again. At least, probably not in my lifetime at 56. Okay. So 3600 yep. minus food. What are you all spending on food? Uh, I try to keep it around 180 bucks a week, but uh, I mean it's usually 180 bucks to 220. How often do you eat out? How often do you eat out? Um, maybe once a week, but it's just me for lunch when I'm unable to pack. I am going to a trade school at night. It's either lunch or dinner. I go three nights a week. Uh, um, okay. All right. So that, great for him going to a trade school. Kudos. Kudos. That that is that's awesome. A trade school. Nothing wrong with that. Get it to get what you need. Get it. Get it short to the point. Get out. Great job. So uh, if we take um, eight hundred bucks, seven hundred bucks for your budget for food, right? For a yep. month. For a month. That leaves us twenty nine hundred dollars. So you can buy food. Food's first. You got me. Yes. I don't care if you pay anybody else until you feed your family. I care if your family is sleeping in a car. Well fed. I'm sorry, I keep hitting the mic. I think the shock keeps it from uh, making any sound. But here we go. I, seriously, I, to me, it it it, it it's the um, roof over your head. You follow yes. me? All right. Second thing is we pay five hundred fifty dollars for shelter. Done. Right. Yep. And then we pay the light bill and the water bill. So we're warm, we're fed, and we're dry. I agree with all that. Just reverse the food in the house. Yes. This is survival first. You following me? Yes. Uh, we may not keep this stupid car because it's freaking out of control. Mm -hmm. If we can't come up with a way to get it paid off soon, it's got to go. But for now, we're going to pay the car payment, too. Yes. Food. I also think, however, if you have that many people, um, the car might actually be kind of a priority. Okay, right, right alongside with it. I, I don't think you can tell a uh, husband of three kids, a wife, and this is their only transportation. Um, I, I, I would do everything we could to uh, at least maintain some sort of transportation. If even if it sell the car, maybe get something a little less expensive. Um, I think he said his car is four fifteen. Technically, I don't think four fifteen is unreasonable in today's day and age. Okay, I could be wrong. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't see that as like, you know, oh my God, my car is, you know, 600, you know, $575 a month. It, I don't, that, that to me can start getting very expensive on his income. Okay. But the transportation, especially considering her medical needs, you've got little kids. I think the transportation sits right up there. Excuse me, I just hiccuped. Um, I think the transportation sits right up there as highly important. Food, like shelter, clothing, transportation, and utilities are basic necessities of life. We call those the four walls. You do the four walls before you do anything else. Agreed. Everyone else. And let me tell you who's at the bottom of the freaking list. I can tell you right now. Because I, I, I've been overdrawn on my bank account. Every credit card bill person that you ever owed, they are at the bottom of the list. They're even lower than your family and friends are if you owe them. They'd be the next bottom of the list. Okay? Those people are at the bottom. Um, th they'll, they'll call you and harass you and try to make you feel like you're, a, you know, you're, you're, you're lower than dirt because you don't prioritize them. Nope. Absolutely not. Part of the reason I've never been homeless in spite of two bankruptcies is my housing always came first. My electric, exactly what, 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 what Dave said, housing, electric, food, vehicle, they, they've come before bankruptcy one, bankruptcy two, overdrafts one, two, three, four, and five. They have always come first. And because they have always come first, I've never even been close to being homeless because they always came first. There's another reason that's also very important to keep your housing top notch and to always come first. You do not want an eviction on your record. You don't want an eviction. Now, I know that in some states, they're starting to um, loosen a little bit some of the eviction laws. Maybe for an after chat, we'll do that someday, okay? Um, matter of fact, no, hold on just a second. Let me write that down because, you know, got to write down this stuff as I think of it, okay? 
that might be an interesting after chat. I can look up some laws on that. You know, you guys know me. I research this stuff, okay? I used to uh, be a librarian. I used to work in a library, and I absolutely loved it because I like researching. So I'll look that up. But one of the reasons that they want to make sure that their housing is solid is you never want an eviction. Now, I know I know they own, okay? At least, he's, at least that's what he's saying, their mortgage. So that's, so that's excellent. But for those who are in a different situation, for those who may be renters, having an eviction on your record can be from what I am gathering. Okay. I've never had one. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> to be totally honest. Um, but I think part of the reason I've never had one in spite of all my money problems is I always knew that shelter was by far and away the most important thing. So no matter how broke I have been, <coughs> excuse me, I have always, always kept a roof over my head. And the creditors that call you and try to say that, you know, you're, 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 you're not a good person and you're being a slacker and you're lazy in your responsibilities, don't care. Don't care. They're at the bottom of the list. Your family and friends go to the bottom of the list. Okay. They will just have to wait. Student loan. How big's a student loan? I don't have one. Thankfully. Good. You know who's right at the bottom next to them? Stupid credit card companies. All right. All right. So there we go. Okay. I was close. I was close. Okay. Student loan people are at the bottom. I, I would agree. That I would agree. Student loan people are even lower than credit card people. Yeah. That's that's it. it that that that's still somewhat debatable because student loans. We we know how out of control student loans are. Okay. We know how absolutely out of control. I, I'll be honest. I would not put student loans at the bottom. I would put credit cards at the very, very bottom below student loans. And here's why. Well, they're both highly unimportant when you're looking at survival. Once you get so much as a leg up in survival and you get to the point where you have to choose between student loans or credit cards. Okay. Just my opinion. The credit cards are more important. Excuse me. The student loan is more important than the credit card. In other words, we're, 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 we're down to the end of the race and I can only pick one to save. Do I save the student loan or do I save the credit cards? I would save the student loan and here's why. The credit cards, I can file bankrupt on those. If the credit cards become a runaway train, I can file bankrupt on the credit cards in most situations. Now you may be thinking, well, what do you mean by most situations? Well, and we're not going to get into it, but just for those who may be curious as to what's going on in my head, in some cases, people actually go to school on credit cards. Yes, they really have. And um, that can be potentially challenged in a bankruptcy when somebody goes to file credit card debt. If they look and it, and it appears that you've used that debt for school instead of, say, taking out student loans or, you know, private federal loans. But that doesn't happen very often. That, that's actually a pretty unusual case because most people, when they go to school, they're going to go through some sort of, you know, private private person like Sally Mae. They're going to go through the federal government. So I, I don't like to just say blanket across, but I would say probably 90% of the cases, okay, um, credit cards, they're, they're usually pretty bank corruptible. And that's the only reason I would put credit cards dead last. Because if you put student loans dead last, we know that student loans become an interest financial runaway train. All right. And that is something that we, we, we can't file bankrupt on that. So that that's the only reason I would say credit cards are last. But but Ram, Ramsey and I, we're, 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 we're agreeing here. For the most part, we're, we're completely in agreement. Because you know okay. what they can do if you don't pay them? Nothing except destroy your credit and sue you eventually eight years from now. But we're going to okay. take care of them before we get there. Okay? Yeah. There see, see, because Dave does not believe in bankruptcy. Okay? He does not believe in bankruptcy, even though he went bankrupt. So I, I try to look at it from all the options that you have. What is every possible option? And if I, so that's why I say if I had to put dead last... Who's paid dead last the credit cards? Because I can wipe that away with a bankruptcy. I can't wipe away a student loan with a bankruptcy. And when a student loan becomes a runaway train, train, I'm in even bigger trouble. At the bottom of the page. So let me just tell you, your emotional state and your sense of control over your destiny changes when your family is fed, the lights and water are paid, and the mortgage is paid, and 
you, you are in a different place emotionally and spiritually. The rest of it's just a stupid game I'm behind on. Okay. But right now it feels like life or death because you've got groceries as the last thing, not the first thing. Now, what's interesting is being single, I can actually afford to put groceries at the end because I only have to feed myself. But when you have kids, and I'll tell you, being adopted and being born in Saigon, Vietnam, adopted to the United States when I was four and a half, okay, I know what malnutrition does to kids, okay? Um, I, I, I've was seen it and my parents, um, being very proactive in adopting kids, you know, I was raised understanding that lots and lots of kids are severely malnourished and I was raised understanding what it does to their, uh, development, their brain development, their height development. So with little kids, you know, he can't do, he, he, he cannot put food at the bottom of the list like I can. Okay. As a fully grown woman. Yeah. I can say, all right, food budget this week is 75 bucks. This is what I got. Okay. I can afford to do that. But with kids, I, I get it. I understand that development part. And it's so critical that they have the nutrition that they need. Yes. I, by the time I pay groceries, I'm overdraft. No. By the time you pay MasterCard. Oh, wait, we're not going to go into overdraft. So we're not paying MasterCard. Screw them. That's right. That's right. Okay. For this month, and then we've got to adjust our income. Now, you've got to get your income up, dude. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do to get your income up? It, it, it goes up progressively every uh, every six months as long as I keep up my uh, my apprenticeship and everything. So well, you you got, you got six months of hell then ahead of you. Up. What are we going to do in the short term to get it up? He may not have time with a full plate to do anything in the short term to get it up. And please, please don't say something like go drive for Uber. Now you're going to put more mileage on a car. See, people forget, okay, when people think they can make fast money, they have to really consider what's it costing you to make that fast money. Okay, what's it costing you? Because when you get down to it, you have to figure, you know, not just the cost of the fast money, but how much more risk are you under with that fast money? Okay, so for example, you know, you often will hear, you know, on, on Ramsey and I'm sure other shows too, but I don't really watch them. Ramsey, Ramsey is my favorite. Okay, but oftentimes you'll hear, go drive for Uber. All right, run up. First off, to drive for Uber, you need car insurance for a business. Yeah, you do. You need business car insurance. Um, and don't try driving thousands of miles without it. You are taking a huge risk that when you get into an accident, it will not be covered because you were using your auto for a business. And don't think you can hide it. I used to work in insurance, as many of you know. And guess what? The insurance companies can put in calls to Uber or Lyft and any other area town uh, companies to find out if you were on a clock. So whether you report it or not, okay, you need that. Then you've got the extra mileage. You have the extra chance for an accident. All right. All of these th things factor in. And I'm thinking this guy has a family of five, counting himself. You know, he's got a wife with a medical condition, which I'm definitely, you know, sorry to hear about that. Okay. Um, and then he's got his little triplets, which I bet are just absolutely adorable, okay? I mean, they are triplets. Twins are just adorable. Twins and triplets, okay? You see, I don't see very many triplets, so I bet they're just absolutely adorable, especially at the four-and-a-half-year-old stage, okay? He's got his hands full. I don't really see... And then he's doing his apprenticeship and trade school. I don't see how he has time for a bore. And to make sure that he can get himself through school and burn out, I would tell him... You know what? Dave says he's got six months of hell. He's already been living in it. So we can ease it by him not paying those extra debts right now. And like he said, food, electric, you know, the, the, the vehicle. Don't forget the auto insurance. OK, um, just those necessities. Let him focus on that for six months. Then he can take the next step. Otherwise, he's going to burn out. Um, you're going I to mean, trade I'm, school three nights a week. What are we doing on those other nights? Because you're about to do some more work, dude. Your family is hungry. No, no. His family's not hungry, Dave. You just told him to put food as the priority. His family's not hungry. And having been a student uh, through a double master's degree, the risk that 
this father takes by trying to pick up another job is simply burnout. Mental and sheer exhaustion burnout. He's already been surviving, okay? Struggles to slash surviving. He's already been surviving doing what he's been doing. Now we're giving him permission to take away some of that stress. We're giving him permission to look, don't worry about the credit cards. Don't worry about the student loans. Okay. I would advise him to worry about his trade school, the triplets, his wife, a little bit of his own mental health and sanity. Okay. That's, that's it. That's a full plate. But to tell him that, because I, I know where this, I know, I know where this call's going. Dave's going to tell him, hey, you're working three nights a week. You got another four nights a week available. But he's busy those four nights. He's tired. He's worn out. Giving him permission to basically drop the student loan, drop the credit cards. That's already going to ease up some of, some of his stress. And that's a good thing. Let that go for six months. Seriously, let it go. You know, ain't crap going to happen with the student loan right now, okay? And we're on the on-ramp period anyways with the student loan. Hopefully they're federal, okay? Um, but if they're federal loans, I'm going to assume they are. Most loans are federal, most, okay? Um, but it's trade school, so who, who knows? They, they, they could be private. But either way, not, nothing's going to happen with those right now, all right? Let the credit cards go right now. I would tell them to stay the course. You can't take a guy in his position... Because he's in a unique position, all right? He's not some single bachelor. He's not, you know, he's not, a, he's not a family man with a wife that works and two kids at home. He's in a very unique position. Homework and doing whatever I can. Yeah. Around the house, housework and everything. Yeah, you're going to probably not be doing as much of that. I, I, I'll let Dave talk. The laundry may pile up a little bit because you got to go make some money because 3600 bucks is tough. Mm-hmm. But he's been living on it right now. So let him can, he will actually, if him, if he's not having to worry about the credit cards and student loan, like I said, that's already going to ease him. Okay. Not saying it's going to pay it off. Not saying it's going to take care of that debt, make it go away, but it is temporarily going to ease his stress. Once the schooling is done, then he can pick up some additional stuff. Cause I'm willing to bet that, that, you know, he's doing a lot more physical stuff around the house than most people are because of his wife's condition and because of the fact that they have triplets. And maybe they don't have any family around. So the way you, the way you get this straight side up is you first take care of necessities, and then two, you get over the top of it, and we're going to cut expenses and add income, and that creates margin. And that will get you under control, Travis. So you, you do have a very tight, tight, tough situation. So something's got to go out of the expense lines and something's got to come up quickly in the income okay. side. Because, you know, it's, you know, it's not easy. You got a really nice low house payment. It's the best thing in this whole story right mm -hmm. now. Yes, it is. And he needs to keep it. So you got you got a fixable situation, but the faster you get the income up and the outgo down, the faster the pain's going to leave. OK, does that make sense to you? Yeah, absolutely. I was just nervous about missing credit card payments. And I, I want to give you permission I, to feed your children before you pay MasterCard. Yeah, I understand. Okay. When you get that straight in your head, all of a sudden it changes everything. Because mm -hmm. if everybody's fed and the lights are done and the water's paid and, and the house payment's paid, I mean, we live to fight another day. All right. As you guys know, that's the end. That's pretty much the end of, of the call. Um, I, I will at some point talk about my experience with being overdrafted in a bank account because I have unfortunately a lot of experience with that. I'm not going to do that tonight um, because I am a little bit tired. It's getting kind of uh, later into the evening here. But I really do want to stress though that in this particular guy's case, having been a student for so long, even though I've obviously am not a parent with triplets okay, or anything like that, I really, really believe OK, that um, he needs to focus on his schooling. It's kind of like this. 
He's been living in a hell to speak. Okay. Maybe not, not literally, of course. Okay. Figuratively. He, he his life has already been somewhat a living hell. I'm sure. Okay. Um, and, and I say that hell affectionately, not, you know, you know, in a, in a cruel way, but I, I think Dave saying he needs to get his income up right now. No, he doesn't need to get his income up right now. Okay. And even though he has been overdrawing his bank account each month and we get it, he, he's got to focus on getting that degree and going to school three nights a week. And I've done it three nights. You can be out till 10 o'clock. All right. We cannot expect, in my opinion, we cannot expect this man to go to school three nights a week. Okay. Uh, also work during the day, help the kids, help the wife, and then say, now you need to go make more money. There will be a time down the road, hopefully in six months or so, where he will be able to focus on making more money. I think it's absolutely outstanding. And I'm thrilled to hear that he's going to a trade school. I am absolutely pleased to hear that. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And I think more people should consider doing it. That's another story for another discussion. Okay. But I think in his case, I would tell him, stay the course. And just like Dave said, you know, he and I, def Dave and I agree on that. G don't worry about the credit cards. Don't worry about the student loan right now. Okay. Give them the big old middle finger if you have to. Okay. I've, I've done it many, many a times. All right. And stay the course. He'll be done in six months, then change and uh, um, make those changes as necessary where he can then start bringing up his income. All right. Well, guys, I wish this guy and his family the absolute best of luck. And I would like to thank you for joining me this evening. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. Thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you will consider subscribing and you guys have an awesome Tuesday night. Bye. Thank you.